my partner TJ and I built this remote controlled airplane from scratch. So it might look super complicated. It has wires inside and so many moving parts. But even me, a chemist who's never done anything with my hands before this, was able to learn mechanical engineering in just a week with the help of my partner TJ. So I'll explain to you a little about how an airplane works. <coughs> there are four main forces that make an airplane go. There's the weight, which can be really heavy because airplanes are super big. There's the lift, which is caused by the wings, which makes it go up. There's drag, which is caused by air resistance. You can't just fly through the air and keep going. And then there's thrust, which is provided by the motor here. And the propeller spins and pushes the air backwards, and then your plane hopefully goes up and forward. So when you're designing something like this, you have to keep in mind multiple steps of the process. You don't just all of a sudden grab some foam and wires and make an airplane. There's actually something called the engineering design process, which is super important for any project you're going to undertake. So the first step is to come up with a project or a problem that you're trying to build something for. In our case, we had a workshop that we needed to lead, and we decided that an airplane would be super cool to teach kids how to build. So we decided on an airplane. The next step is to think about your limitations or requirements. So we knew that it had to be done in a week, and we knew we had a budget, so we decided we can't build full-size airplanes, so we're going to build little remote-controlled ones in pairs. The next part of the process is brainstorming. You have to decide what your plane's going to look like. Actually, in our class, we made the high schoolers design their own wings, and one group was really into Star Wars, so they made X-wing fighter wings, and they actually flew really well. But we decided for this plane, we were going to use standard wings, because we were sure that it would fly them. Afterwards, we prototyped. So we build a foam plane like this, and we make sure that all the parts are on there before we can build the actual one. So we have to make sure that it's actually going to follow all the principles of physics that we need to consider. And then finally, you come up with a product like this, which you, you then test fly, and then after it breaks inevitably, you build it up again and then make it better. So now, hopefully, I'm going to make it fly for you guys so you can see what it looks like in the air. Alright, 
controls the flow of electricity from the battery, which is my laptop, and these black packs. It goes through the circuit boards and into the Arduino, which Lissandra will talk about how coding can make circuits more complicated. Oh. Okay, so with an Arduino, we can use coding to control electrical circuits. And with that, we can make uh, this circuit that we made. This controls a robotic hand using this glove. We hooked up some sensors to it. Um, as you guys can see, these are flex sensors. They detect how much that you're bending your finger. So the Arduino reads in how much you bend the, this finger, and then it tells this robotic hand how much to bend. So if you look here, I'm going to bend this finger here, and if you look on the hand, it's bent. So I can control how much I'm bending it. So if I put on the glove, I can actually control it. So Sarah's going to demonstrate what that looks like. Uh, how about 
you in the pink sky. Sugar, perfect. And in, way in the back, in the gray sweatshirt back to the girl, yes. Milk, good. Um, someone on this side, how about the guy in the green blue sweater thing? You don't know, okay, that's okay. We'll find out, right? Um, and then from here, how about you? Yeah, yeah I didn't think I'd find you. Yo, yes, yeah, yeah. both of you guys. Milk, okay. Um, any, any other ideas? Are you? Fruits, uh huh. Good, favorite. Uh, the guy in the blue standing up. Green, black, black, black. Okay. Awesome. So, all right, you guys listen. So, give me five. Awesome. Okay, so you guys listen to a lot of ingredients, but those are all like liquid stuff, right? So, ice cream, you guys know, is cold or hot? Cold. Cold? How do you make it cold? Ice. Ice? All right. Snow? <laughs> okay. That's creative. Yep. Yeah. So today, instead of using ice or the fridge, we're going to use something called liquid nitrogen. Has anyone heard of that? Yeah? You guys heard? Ah, oh, so, give me five. <laughs> okay, so that's a good question. What's nitrogen? Nitrogen is actually an element. It's, all, um, it's actually everywhere. So it's in our bodies, like it's found in protein, DNA, but it's also found in the air. But today, we're using liquid nitrogen, so it's in the form of liquid. Right, so the boiling temperature for this is actually very low. Um, or is it high? Low. Um, low. <laughs> low. <laughs> so um, I'll show you what it is. Uh, but before we do, we're gonna mix all the ingredients for ice cream first, okay? And for that, um, yeah, I'll call up some volunteers. So in the back, way in the back, the guy with glasses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, don't be more volunteers. <laughs> okay. Boys and girls, give me five. Oh. Let's be respectful, please. So in here, this is uh, coffee creamer. So this is basically, yeah, like heavy cream kind of thing. Um, you want to pour this in the, in here, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, got it. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. Um, all right. Same person? All right, same person. Um, and then we're going to do, you're going to put in about 300 of sugar. Right? This is sugar, guys. Perfect. And then you're going to dump in. This is our whipping cream. So you just dump that. And so now he is dumping in the whipping cream. Yes.
right, boys and girls, right now we stirred all the ingredients. And Lissandro has gloves on. Why do you think Lissandro has gloves on? Please raise your hand quietly. Miri, why does he have gloves on? Too hot? Too cold, right? It's extremely cold. So, Chi Chi, do you want to explain what will happen? Yeah, okay. So, like I said before, we're going to use chemistry to make ice cream, right? So, right now, this is liquidy, right? So, ice cream is a solid, right? So, we need liquid nitrogen to change the, the phase of the ice cream to, from liquid into a solid. So, right now, it's kind of like a milky, like you have melted ice cream, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to freeze this ice cream really, really fast by using liquid nitrogen, all right? So as you can see, the nitrogen is literally a liquid, and it changed is changing the liquid ice so right cream kind of into ice cream. Yep. Instantly. Are you guys cool? No. Are your hands cool? No. No. Are you okay? I can't just Okay. okay. Alright, let's see how it looks. So, so this part, this part's frozen. So, so this part is frozen, right? And then some other parts on the side are still kind of liquid. So do you see how fast we made ice cream? We made ice cream in like literally five minutes, right? Um, and so this is just a bit of, four minutes, four minutes. <laughs> this is just a bit of chemistry. Um, and we'll finish up uh, make, mixing the ice cream and stuff, but um, this is, the rest are demos, and we'll open up for questions about any of our demonstrations, okay? So everyone give Chi Chi a round of applause. <laughs> All right, so we are going to um, end by giving you the opportunity to ask some questions uh, about the students or even the school they're from, MIT. All right. Uh, I think we're going to have the ad the teachers and admin eat it. So I need questions for 